1937, Norman Baker bought the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas and opened what became one of the most famous uh, health uh, centers of its time. Uh, it was a place that focused on creating an environment where people felt better. It wasn't just a typical hospital, it was a beautiful hotel overlooking an entire valley where people had sunshine and beauty and all the things that he felt were part of the healing process. Uh, he included uh, healing herbs and healthy foods as well as his main ingredient which was really teaching people how to focus their attention in a different way, a more positive way to support their own healing process. Uh, he was a man who got started in the early part of the century as an inventor and a creator with uh, a couple of different machines, but his real greatness, his real genius came about when he got interested in the mind and its power to heal. Uh, and that started with his introduction into uh, what they then called uh, mentalists, uh, the individuals who traveled in carnivals and stuff like that, and actually had some special powers to see into what was going on with people and uh, to understand the nature of the mind. That became his fascination. At 15, he got very sick and was living alone uh, and took that teaching that he had heard from the mentalists and used the power of his mind to heal himself. And his healing happened very quickly and he he really regarded that as a pivotal point for him in understanding the power of the mind. And it was from then on that it, it influenced the direction that he took in terms of his understanding of healing, his understanding of the power that we each have to uh, take control of our own lives and create what we really want. His conflict with the government, with the medical establishment, uh, came because of his different view of healing. It came as a result of his perceiving that the institutions of society were really geared toward making money and consolidating control rather than actually being focused, focused on healing people or supporting people. He was a kind of genius that saw beyond what most people saw and had the courage to stand up and teach the world what he knew, uh, to share through his radio station what he saw to be true. And part of that was recognizing that aluminum cooking ware had a negative effect on people's health. He was probably the first person in the country uh, in the early 1900s, uh, but he went on to, to recognize the that the use of uh, chemotherapy, introduction of aluminum and radiation therapy into the, the country, which started in 19, was actually killing people and not helping cancer and other diseases that happened. But the medical establishment was very determined to use that as its method for killing cancer. They had a, a view that they had to aggressively attack uh, the cancer and they used that approach, but as Norman Baker pointed out, nobody who used that approach lived more than five or six years, and in fact at one point he made a challenge to everybody in the United States for anyone who had cancer and had received the chemotherapy or the radiation who had survived longer than six years to come forward, and nobody did. He had no takers. Uh, he invited the medical establishment to come to his hospital in Muscatine, Iowa and to look at the methods that he was using, which were natural methods, eating healthy food, uh, using uh, natural healing herbs to cleanse and heal the body, uh, to be in an environment that was positive and health-giving instead of the kind of hospitals that existed in those days, which were uh, drab and unhealthy and not really very clean at the time. Uh, and he was trying to communicate that to the world around him. He became a folk hero to the people as much as he was a, a sort of enemy, uh, an iconoclast to the establishment. 
He went after the American Medical Association. He went after the aluminum manufacturers. And he also exposed the FCC for their collusion in the whole process of misinformation that was happening at the time. And his genius was not only in, in his insight and his ability to articulate what was going on, but his courage in standing up as one individual to confront uh, all of those establishment organizations. Those um, uh, numerous times he was refused a license because he didn't have some piece of equipment, a transmitter. When they told him that they didn't have a transmitter to sell him, he built his own because he was that kind of a creative genius capable of doing things like that. Um, he was an extraordinary man of his time, a man who was an individualist and believed that it's individuals who should have the power in their own lives, not institutions. And that was probably one of the main things that he tried to communicate to people, that they had to take responsibility for their own health and their own well-being. And they had to stop putting themselves in the hands of institutions that had a bigger interest in their financial gain than they did in the health and well-being of their patients.